Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to talk about the death of base cards. We've been hearing that a long time. Base cards are dead in the sense that they are not nearly as collectible. And I can understand that point of view. Base cards in the last two years have had this renaissance that they have just skyrocketed and had this value attached to them that has not been attached to them since probably the 90s and the junk wax era when all you really had were base cards and there weren't any grading companies. And it's been kind of similar. We had grading companies now so we can attribute the correct value to these cards, but we're seeing large drops in these values. And I want to discuss whether base cards are actually dead or if it's just something we're considering worth actually visualizing based off of the last two years with some recency bias. So let's just take a look. Here is the Juan Soto 2018 Tops update. When it first started, the very first sale was $22 for a PSA 10 Juan Soto. And then it went all the way up to 150. It went back down to 80, went all the way up to 300, back down to 175, up to 350. 75 is that what it is 380 is the high price and now it's all the way back sitting at 154 dollars so it's had some roller coasters and all of these can kind of be attributed basically to market factors and the general view of base cards in the market but historically base cards have not had a huge pull prior to 2020 yes base cards have had a place in the hobby the mike trout 2011 tops update is a fantastic example of this as it's gone up and up and up and up ever since it was released in 2011 but that's probably because there was no alternative option to that trout it didn't have a Tops Chrome because it was in Tops Update and there was no Tops Chrome update until 2013. And on top of that, it was just the go-to investment card because Trout didn't have very many cards. And that started that renaissance a little bit back up. And then it really hit as Gary Vee and other influencers were showing the cards they were buying. They had Luca PSA 10s, Mookie Betts PSA 10s. They were showing all these pictures and they weren't the Chrome parallels or the Chrome versions or any parallels in general. They were the base cards. And that's just kind of what happens if people get into the hobby and we can see a slight correction currently happening. And I want to discuss where base cards are now based off of a ratio that I'm doing. And this ratio, we can actually take a look at the gold parallel versus the base card. Both of these are in PSA 10. And this is from 2018 to 2021, because this is the entire existence of this card. You can see the gold when it first started in a PSA 10, it was a $272 card while the base card was $41. Not a huge difference. Still, you know, it's probably five times the value. But then we have this big gap right here. And this is in 2021 after the realization that there probably isn't as much value in base cards right here. They were still close and then it's separated. And that's because people who are newer to the hobby, people who are established veterans in the hobby, they want to target the better versions, the more popular versions, which is where we get the gold parallel. Now the high price hit around $5,000, about 4,700. And now it's currently sitting at $2,800 while the base is $155. Overall, both are up drastically over the entire time frame of the existence of the card. But that doesn't mean base cards are in a good spot. Another example, here's the Mike Trout. I hovered over 10, 21, 2014. So you can see a PSA 10 gold and a PSA 10 base card. So you can kind of compare the difference between them. And you can still see like 2.4 times value, you'd say 100 versus $240. So you can get 2.4 base cards for every gold. And now a gold costs $20,000 versus 2,800. So it's about nine times valuation. Then we have Mookie Betts. His was the same situation. These golds were almost the same price as the base. So the start price was 92 two dollars the start price for the base was seventeen dollars and then the same separation happened in 2021 after that, we have Ronald Acuna. He was a very interesting case, him and Mike Trout. Before 2020, maybe even 2019, you could say, Mookie and Soto weren't as sought after as Trout and Acuna. I'd argue Mookie's still not as sought after as Trout, but Acuna is definitely less sought after than Soto right now. And it's really interesting to see because they didn't have the exact same situations happen with their cards, which I'll show in a minute, but Ronald Acuna's gold has always sold significantly higher than his base. It started at a 10 times multiplier. If we go back to Soto, Photo. his started like at a five times multiplier. So it's a pretty big difference between those two. But you can see it peaked out around 4,000, actually just over $4,000. And it's currently sitting at $2,000 versus the last PSA 10 sells for $97. So 20 times valuation, if that's just the quick math off my head. So I want to show this graph. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going on with these players. And what this is, in 2019, I just graphed what I was telling you with like, you can get five base for one gold. And that's the situation with Mookie. You could get four base for every gold. And then 2020 came, you could get basically two base for every gold. And then it came back in 2021. Then a year later, six base for every gold. So what you're seeing is these two are different than these two. But with Mookie and Juan Soto, they weren't as sought after. They weren't the top dogs at the time. Trout and Acuna were. And so you can see in 2019, 
2019, we weren't really valuing base cards as the best card. It dropped, you know, in 2020, when people were starting to value those base cards just as much as parallels. And then they went back up and people realized that was a very silly thing to do. You can see that same thing with Juan Soto. You can see in 2019 and 2021, it is a 8.5 to 9.96. Essentially, you can get 10 base for one gold, but it dropped down in 2020 to seven base for every gold. So people may have been thinking that base cards are a better investment because they're easy to flip, they're liquid, all of these reasons that people were buying base cards. And then you can see that completely changed that mentality as we're starting to understand how many of these are graded and how many of these exist. I've done videos talking about the pack odds of cards that show how many of these exist. If you look at Mookie Betts, it's around 80,000 of his tops update card that we're talking about. If you look at Juan Soto, it's about 250,000 of his tops update card that we're looking at. Trout's around 60,000. So these print runs are increasing and that's why the distance between Mike Trout's and Mookie Betts bets cards aren't as like high of a multiplier as Juan Soto and Ronald Acuna. Theirs are much higher because there's just so many more base in circulation that there's just a lot of supply. So supply and demand don't quite match up while the demand is still strong for those gold PSA 10s, just like they are across the board. It's just, there's less of them compared to the base cards. So that's what I wanted to show is that I'm pretty sure if we can look back, are they dead? I do not think they're dead. But what we had happen is end of 2019 through 2021, people were just excited about being in the hobby and they wanted the iconic flagship image of the card. And this goes across basketball and football as well. Same with like Luca's Prism Rookie it was a PSA 10 or Giannis's Prism Rookie in a PSA 10. They were very expensive and now they're probably half of what they were at previously. So they're essentially back to what was happening before 2020. Before there was a big entrance in the hobby, these cards are kind of back to where they were. They have a place in the hobby. Base cards exist for a very good reason and I don't think they're going to die. They could trend down slowly as a player ages in his career, but they're still important for people to invest in. It's still like having a little share of a player. People cannot afford gold PSA 10s because they're expensive. People can't afford PSA 10 base. And for that reason, because there's different people with different, how deep their pocket is in the hobby, it's going to create different transactions on different levels for these cards. So I kind of want to point out just that that base card renaissance that happened in 2020. In 1990, they were the only cards around and then parallels came after the hobby died to kind of help get some artificial scarcity back in the hobby. So people actually could attribute this card has 99 copies, for example. But now with modern cards, you're seeing those print runs going back up. So it's a little bit different story again. They're still important, but I would say everything pre-2017 for baseball cards has relatively low enough print runs where they're sustainable. I even think 2018 and 2019 have low enough print runs where they're sustainable in regards to their value maintaining where it's at. But 2020, 2021, 2022, we're going to be getting close to up to a million cards per base card in the next five to 10 years. And that's not going to be nearly as sustainable as it was previously. I think they will always have an important role because they're a very good entrance card for a player into that player. They're the iconic image. They're what Topps is going to make reprints of in 20, 30 years. They're going to release as a subset in Topps Series 1 2050. Well, it won't be Topps. It'll be Fanatics, but they'll own Topps. You get my point. So overall, don't freak out about base cards. If you have a lot of base cards, if you pay those high prices, that's too bad. Sometimes it's okay to sell and take a small loss if you want to move those cards into something else you believe in. I'm not a financial expert, so these cards could boom again. You never know how the market reacts. Sports card, hobby, and market is extremely reactionary and emotional, and so some some situations could happen that can make it happen again. Whether there's another boom in the hobby or what it is. But if you're worried about it, you're worried about them tanking more, it's okay to take a loss. I've taken losses on cards. I bought Mookie Betts PSA 10 update rookie cards for $400 because they were at a thousand and I was waiting and buying the dip slowly and it started at 400 and now they're under 250. And so if I was going to sell that card for 250, I wouldn't feel that bad about it. It was an educated, calculated decision I made and it was wrong, but you're going to be wrong sometimes. As long as you're right 70% of the time, you're going to be doing very, very well in this hobby. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this or learned anything, hit that like button so other people can see it. And other than that, I will catch you in the next video.